everyone, Sam Sanders here. I'm happy to inform you on April 11th, on Thursday, I will be going live with Tea Time with Bunky. Please come join us. Welcome to Tea Time with Bunky. This is Reggie. Hi, Ben. All right. Welcome to Tea Time with <laughs> Welcome to Tea Time with Bunky. everybody hi everybody welcome to tea time with bunky i'm waiting for my guest to log on but in the meantime while he's doing all of this good evening Teresa. um i would like to thank all of my tea time with bunky followers and subscribers um shout out to the bgm is global network um you can hear this week's show next thursday and next sunday um we're on uh Zeno FM with has additional online supports by Radio Music Box. Um, you can catch this show on Thursday at 8 a.m. on Culture Shock Radio, which is in Canada, Rock Box Radio, Radio Facetto, New Mexico, Mexico, Bop the Music FM, which is in Guadalupe, Caribbean Islands. I see him there Sundays at 12 p.m. on Confidence Radio. These are all on the VGN Village Global Network app. Um, which is on Android and iOS. You can download it for free and listen to this. And this show will be airing in 191 plus countries next week. Um, what else can I say? Oh, oh, as you all saw, Monday is Tea Time's birthday. I'll be on for three years. God is good. Won't he do it? And it all started with a whisper. And I just listened to listen to the voice of the Lord. Um Tonight's, well, Tea Time with Bunky is the place with enlightening discussions, empowering stories and dialogues you have been longing to hear. So um, dive deep with us and be a part of the conversation that resonates with the community and the world. Before I bring my guest on, I just want to remind you all, if you have not registered or if you think you're registered, go to um, voterlookup.elections.ny.gov to make sure that you are registered to vote. I stress this all the time. Because the shenanigans that's going on in Sullivan County, not registered to vote, you have no voice. And then the things that they're doing with these block votes, I'm telling you guys, look at what's going on around you. That's all I have to say about that. But my guest tonight, my guest tonight, Mr. Sam Sanders, he's going to have to tell me more about him because like I keep telling people, I am not a basketball person. I'm, I'm not a basketball person, but we're not just talking basketball. But he is the founder of Sam Sanders Rising Stars Incorporated. We're going to talk about that. He's an ordained deacon at Friendship Baptist Church. I love that. Um, he tried out for the New Jersey Net. He's a former head coach at the Hudson River, Hudson Valley River ABA. They'll find out I'm sure it's something basketball. Former coach at N NPBL Hudson Valley Hawks, in which they won the championship in 2007. So if I'm wrong on any of that, he will correct me. So without further ado, Mr. Sanders, welcome to Tea Time with Bunky. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. How are you? I am stressed out, but I am good. I'm blessed. The stress has nothing to do with this show. It's just politics. Oh, okay. Well, oh. I just I just want to say it's an honor to be on your show tonight. I thank you for having me. Thank you. And if I can just say real quickly before you go on is, um, I just like to give all the praise, the glory, and the honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who yes. without him, I wouldn't be here or none of us would be here today. So I, I just wanted to say that if that's okay. Thank you. Well, absolutely. It's <laughs> all about him with me. It's all about him. So um, so tell us a little bit about you because, okay, wait. Let's get all this basketball stuff out the way, okay? Let's yes. get this out the way because, like I said, I'm not – okay, I was a cheerleader since 1983. I was a varsity cheerleader, cheerleader since seventh grade. But I'm a comic. See, I'm a cop. <laughs> so um, I don't know 
when 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 did you play? When when did you play? Well, I um I graduated in 1979, okay. and I'd like to give a shout out to the class of 1979. A bunch of great um, kids that I graduated with. Some of them will be online with us tonight. And I was yeah. saying that's a great class that I graduated with, and I, I love those guys. I love you guys, class of 1979. Oh, they tuning in. They tuning in. Okay. And you were you were the man. From what I'm hearing, from what I'm everything I'm hearing, <laughs> I'm like, okay. I'm like, all right, I'm like, I don't know. And you know, I get the double look from people. And I'm like, I don't know who he is. What do you mean you don't know? You're from. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not from well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bunky, um, it's okay. Um, I well, you, uh, I'll give you a little uh, my basketball background. Um, like I said, I, I played in I played at Liberty High School, and um, I graduated in 1979, and um. I'm, I'm a humble guy, as you'll find out through this whole interview. I don't really like I don't really talk about myself a lot, as as you know. Um, you know, when I did the Rec, Rec Boys uh, podcast, shout out to uh, Chris and uh, Rashad. Yes. Um, and this T-shirt I'm wearing right here is the first design for my uh, Sam Sanders Rising Stars Basketball Clinic, and they made that. They oh, made okay. it and and, don and donated it. So I appreciate them for life for that. Yeah. But very quickly, um, I played high school basketball at Liberty High School uh, with a bunch of great guys on the team. Um, I was, I guess you would say the star player. What I'm most proud about playing at Liberty High School, playing basketball, was the fact that um, I was the recipient of, uh, if you know David Richards, uh, his dad was a great player, Ivan Richards. I was the first recipient of the Ivan Richards MVP, uh, Most Valuable Player of the Team Award. I won that twice. Congratulations. So, yeah, so I'm very proud of that. And and the fact that, um, briefly, a little history about uh, the our team was, I was the tallest starter at uh, 5'11", 6 foot. So I, I played, I really played out of position at that time. I played uh, more uh, forward, center. I didn't really get to use my guard skills until I went to college. So, okay. but I always could shoot. I, you know, I was, I, was a, I was a good shooter. And then, okay. uh, I, Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah. You you had to. I mean, everybody knows your name. Okay. So, all right. Let's get into this. Okay. So, being basketball and stuff like that. Um, what were some of the key lessons that you learned in building character, like being a part of a team? Well, <clears throat> uh, me as a player, you know, I I I I I I build toughness mm -hmm. as a player. Because as I, you know, as I explained earlier to you, um, I was the tallest starter on my team in high school, and you know we had we had a lot of good guys on our team, and um, my character was as a leader. You know, I think I gained leader skills even even in high school. You know, I had leader skills, or and, you know, the, you know, a lot of the guys looked up to me. You know, as the leader of the team. I will say to you, Bunky, that um, I, I played with a a, a, a a bunch of great guys on the team. And um, if I can just say real quickly, you know, like a Steve Eisenberg, a Timmy Merklin. Timmy Merklin made me the guard that I am, you know, once I left high school. Timmy Merklin was a guard. He was our point guard on the team. I don't know if you know what point guard means, but very quickly. He had very, very, very quick hands, some of the quickest hands I've ever seen on a player. So he made me be able to get a handle, to be able to handle the ball that I was able to use, you know, moving forward into college and semi-pro and, and all that. So shout out, kudos to Timmy Merkman for that yeah, and I Steve mean, Eisenberg. I mean, yeah, our teams, the teams, um, I, I think being a part of a team, it does give you character and it, it you can go one or two ways. You become, you can become arrogant and cocky and think you're the man or the woman. Right. Or you can take those skills that you learn and pass it on to people, which it seems like you did. Right. It seems like that's what yeah. you did. Yes. Well, the humbleness that I, I described to you earlier, you know, I had that since high school. You know, I never I never thought I was the man. You know, I knew I, I knew I was a good player uh -huh. and I was one of the best in the whole, in the area, you know, proven by the stats and stuff. Like I told uh, Chris and Rashad when I did that their podcast that everything that I say and everything that we're discussing, I, you know, I have 
facts and stuff to back it up. I know I, I have like three scrapbooks full of stuff, you know, but but to, just to answer your question real quick, yes, I'm a very humble person, even to this day. People that really know me, know Sam Sanders, know that I'm a humble person and I don't really talk about myself, but but I was a good player. Yeah, I, I was one of the best in the area. So I, I will say that. Popular. That's what it means because we all know that the main basketball player is like super duper popular. So you're like real humble to say you're like really playing it down. You're you're playing it down. Oh yeah, yes, yes, Bunky. Because we had a we had a lot of we had a lot of good players, you know. Um, and uh, we had a lot of good players in my time and after my yeah. time, and that's where my mentorship came in because I worked with a lot of lot of guys like Earl Pugh. Um, 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 a few, few other guys. Forgive me, I can't think of their names right now. But I worked with a lot of kids. I worked with a lot of kids and helped them with their Duffies. games. And, the Duffies. Yeah, the Duffies. Oh, yeah. the Duffies were great. You know, um, you know, Kenny Duffy. God bless his soul. You know, rest his soul. And um, you know, a lot of the Duffy, Ronnie and you know the Sanders family, the Duffy family. You know, we we were connected. You know, uh -huh. we connected and uh, but I had a lot of mentors. I had a lot of mentors that helped me with my game, you know, and um, you know, like my cousin Nate Bell, you know Nate probably, you know, I think we were at uh, his mother's funeral, you know. And, and yeah, I think you were my sister's, my sister's um grandma. Right. 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 So her son, Nate, you know, he was like my big brother. You know, I, I never had a big brother. I'm the oldest in my family out of out of eleven of us. So, you know, I, I never had a big brother. So so Nate was like like my big brother. And then there was Reggie Biddings, who was my my main mentor, you know, that okay. to help me a lot. You know, and as we go on with this discussion, you know, I, I can tell you a little bit more about him whenever okay. you, you know, want me to, you know. Because I know there's a lot of things you want to discuss. Yeah, but but with this show too, you're gonna mention something because it's a conversation. You're gonna mention something and be like, oh, wait a minute. And then I'm gonna we're gonna double back because like i give you the layout just to give you an idea of where we're going but then you're going i know you're going to say something that's going to spark curiosity in me <laughs> I yeah i'm going to ask yes so you went through this and basketball and you have all of this support you ended up trying out for the new jersey nets yes now, yes that's correct take us down that what did that look like to make you get to that point in your life where you're like okay i'm here so how did that well <laughs> Well, well, it, that that happened because once I finished high school, I went to Dell High Junior College. I went to junior college for two years and I played for a great coach, Mike Dean, who actually played with Dr. J in the, in the old ABA for the uh, uh, um, the, the uh, Sixers. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So Mike Dean was with my first coach. And then I had another coach. Um, oh, shoot, I can't think of his name right now. But um, my second year at Dell High was my best year. That's when I remember I mentioned to you that my guard skills really started to form from because when in high school, you know, I played more underneath the basket than I did outside, you know, even though I was still a good shooter. But when I got to college, I was able to play my natural position, which is a shooting guard. And um, and um, I was able to, you know, you know, develop my shooting skills. So when I was playing at Dell High, you know, I did I did good there. I made all region and everything, and I made honorable mention all American there. And that led to my next adventure, you know, going on to uh, Mansfield University, who recruited me. I got recruited by a few schools, but I chose Mansfield, and um, you know, I went there, and that's when um, I played there for two years, and then the semi pro um, situation came in off of, off of that. Okay. So, so what, that's where the new, that's where the tryouts for the New Jersey Nets came in because okay. I played two years. Well, I played actually. Um, well, I don't want to show you. I, I had articles out to show, but I'm not going to show those. But right, you can show them. You can hold them up and try to. I mean, look. Oh, okay. So yeah. So um, you know, just briefly. Um, it says Sam Sanders was named MVP of the Semi Pro Elmire El Basketball League um, last season. I played there four years. Okay. And my my fourth season, which was my last, um, I averaged um and you know, Rashawn uh Rashad and them laugh at this, but you know, they but I, I averaged forty three points that year. And I won MVP of the league that year, you know. Wait, so wait, wait. You said you averaged forty 
I have 43 points that, that last year, yes. Uh -huh. What does that mean? Like every game you well it, from well we played we played a total of about 20 20 games, 22 okay. games or something like that. So for that that amount of games, I averaged 43. But I my highest scoring game was like maybe 44, 45. But but when you when you when you add up all those totals for those amount of games, it came out to 43. But not only did I average 43 points, but you know, I averaged seven rebounds and five assists. So I did more than just shoot, but you know, and I take pride in that. That I was an all-around player. I felt I was an all-around player. So you know, but yeah, that that that's what happened with that. And um, so when I went to, it's safe to mm -hmm. say that you kind of carried the team, basically. Maybe yeah, well, you know, I was able, I was able to play my natural position, which is a okay. shooting guard. And um, I know I was able to, you know, I was I was able to score. And one thing I'm really proud of, Bunky, is the fact that um, my my shooting percentage was pretty high. It was like like um, high 40s, 50s. Well, I know you don't understand that, but in the NBA, if you shoot like anything over 35, 36, 37 percent, or in the 40s, like a Steph Curry, Steph Curry shoots 40 some percent from the three point line. So that's why he's the greatest, you know, because okay. he, he's such a Awesome shooter. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know a little bit about it. I mean, my sons played basketball, all my uncles, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so yes. I, I just don't pay attention. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, yeah. I don't. No, no, no. That's that's fine. So, very quickly, the, the New Jersey uh, Nets trial was a free agent trial from the semi pro league. Okay. So, what happens is they, they invite you to a, to a camp. A free agent camp is called for uh, all basketball players to try to make their their, their team, the actual okay. NBA team. So it was a three day tryout at Fairleigh Dickinson University in New Jersey. So I went there from a Friday to a Sunday for the tryouts, and um, you know, I, I I did I did good, I did good, I did good. But the problem was in my time, you know, only being six foot. You know, they wasn't really accepting shooting guards, especially unless you was an exceptional player like our Allen Iverson now or okay. or guys uh, or guys in the 70s. If you remember, this is in the 80s when I tried out. Okay. You know, so um, I wasn't a big guard. So, you know, even though I had good stats and stuff and I did good in the camp, I was mm -hmm. considered too small to play in the NBA as a shooting guard for the New Jersey Nets. So, okay. you know, it is what it is. When you said 5'11", I'm like, uh, aren't they normally taller? <laughs> yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I average out to six foot. And on uh, nowadays, just to give you, a, give you an example, nowadays, it doesn't matter about your height. Mm -hmm. You know, nowadays, the NBA is outside to inside. In my day, it was inside to outside. So the bigger man, was, uh, the, the big man really controlled the game more than the guards did in, in my time. So... But today, if I was if I was if I was in my prime today, I really believe that I could probably play in the NBA. Like Maurice. Right. But Maurice was six six. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Maurice Martin, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was six six. You know, an okay. awesome player. Yeah, yeah, he was six six. Yeah. Oh wow, okay. I didn't know he was that tall. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you you did the New Jersey, you you tried out for that and but you know everything yeah. happens for a reason in my in my mind's eye. Everything happens for a reason. Um, yes. But you ended up starting this foundation. Um, yes. What inspired you to start the um, Rising Stars? Well, my thing my thing is Bunky was that I always loved working with kids, okay. and it started at Liberty High School where I was a coach. Okay. You know, I started coaching JV basketball. And then, um, you know, I coached baseball there and I did football there, modified football there. But my, my main thing was basketball there. Mm -hmm. And um, so I always loved working with kids. So um, what happened was, oh, you, I, I, you probably didn't know this, but I actually coached at Fallsburg, too. I coached the, the girls varsity in Fallsburg. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And um, I actually... I actually am very proud of my coaching career, especially at Fallsburg, because the girls, the girls varsity at Fallsburg had not made the sectionals or the playoffs for nine years. And when I came there that one year, you know, we made the sectionals. So, so what year was that? What year was that? 
Um, actually, uh, shoot, I forget. Oh, here, here's a picture of us. I don't know if you can see it too well, but this is a picture of me with the girls that I coach. And I believe well, that year. Tara and them, Tara and Rhonda and Cheryl. Yeah, 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 oh, it was all of them. Yeah. I'm calling yeah. all their names out. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. So it was that year. Okay. And uh, and we we made the sessionals for the first time in nine years at you know for the girls there at Fallsburg and uh, oh, great they, great they, bunch of girls great bunch yeah, of girls they are yeah that's, great yeah. bunch of girls so. oh. but but to get back to your question I started the foundation because I did a Nike clinic at at the high school one year at Liberty at uh, Liberty High School and and it, it was all. Awesome. What is that? You said a Nike clinic. Well, what it, it was a it was a Nike. Well, now you know they have uh, um, they have Adidas. They have uh, they have AAU basketball and all that now. Well, you know, but which, what does you know, that look like? Like if um, well, okay. well, Nike the Nike clinic that I ran was for girls and boys, and we did it at the high school, and we had coaches come in, and and we had Nike Nike themselves came in. They gave out posters and T-shirts and. And and um, we had girls and boys participate in this clinic from the ages I believe was from 13 to 18. And what I'm really proud about that is the fact that is there was there was a fee, fee, and I got paid uh, I got paid 700 dollars for that. But I told Nike that I didn't want the money. I wanted all the kids to go for free. I wanted all the kids to go for free. So I gave up my 700 dollar fee. So each kid that participated in the clinic went for free. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really sweet. A lot of people wouldn't have did that. Yeah, and well, that's why that's that's where my love of helping kids started right there. So um, later on down the road, uh, I decided to start my own um, my own company, Sam Sanders Rise and Start Basketball Clinic for mm -hmm. kids, and I did four of them so far. You know, because it's hard to do those because you need sponsors. Which Rashad and Chris was the sponsor of my first one with the T-shirt, okay. and um, you need sponsors and you need support, and um, sometimes you didn't, I didn't really get that support, you know, and um, but kids and families and people still came and participated, and, and I appreciate that very much. So and that's that that's where that started. Mm -hmm. That was in yeah. County, and and that's yeah. a problem that's still going on. Um, there's like no support. There's no, no support. You know, no, no, you're right, Bunky. No, right. there's no support. And I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, Janine Jackson Mills, who just, I believe, made the trustee board for Liberty, for okay. Liberty. And I believe that's that's a sign of, you know, I, I just want to say this real quick if I can. Yes, um, go ahead. It's a conversation. I just, want, I just want to say this real quick if I can. I love Selvin County. I love Liberty. I love the town of Liberty, born and raised here. I love Liberty High School, but I have to say this because it's on my it's on my mind and my heart. Mm -hmm. um, Liberty High School, I love y'all. Liberty, the town of Liberty, I love y'all. But we're living in old days, old times. We need to come up to the times now. Hello. We need to come up to the times now, and I know some people may not like me or or care about what I'm saying but I just want you to know that I love everybody and mm -hmm. if you like me or you love me I appreciate you I love you if you don't like me or care about me I still love you and there's nothing okay. you can do about it so right. okay like that's my yeah, attitude. Okay. but okay. I just want to say to you I just want to say this to you real quick Bonky that Liberty High School like I said I love you guys but the wall of fame, I'm gonna speak on this real quick. The wall of fame that you have at Liberty High School for people who are supposed to have done great things at Liberty and stuff, and they have. All those that have made it, I appreciate y'all. I got nominated for the Liberty Wall of Fame three times. I, I didn't put myself there. I got nominated for the Liberty Wall of Fame three times for everything that I've done in Liberty. I filled out all this crazy paperwork and stuff that y'all wanted me to do. And I'm gonna tell you something, Bunky. Not everybody that's on the Liberty Wall of Fame filled out all this paperwork and stuff that I filled out. I'm sure they, I'm sure they did not. And there's other people just as deserving as me to be in the Liberty Wall of Fame. But you know what, Bunky? I serve a, I serve a high and mighty God. That's where my award is. That's where my reward is. So, uh, you know, I, I don't worry about it anymore. But I just had to say that because it was on my heart. That there's some people just as deserving as me should have made it. 
and and that's the thing um like with anything i say i don't know about paul's words wall of fame I, like i said i'm just i i don't know um and a lot it's all political this is all political yeah. Yeah, it's um, all political. It's political it's, and um uh, popularity contest. Not and but you were super duper popular. But growing up here in Sullivan County, myself, I've been here now, Lord God, almost 54 years. And um to look at it like you you talk about how you love liberty, um, how you love your school. Like I'm a diehard comic all day. I'm a comic all day. <laughs> and I um <laughs> we used to play, I mean, like, you know the Falls were Liberty, Liberty rivalry. Oh, oh, my God. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Shout out to shout out to Fallsburg. Shout out to Monticello. I just want to tell you this, Bunky. When we used to go to games back in the day, and this is going to lead into my mentor that I would like to mention later on, if it's possible, Reggie Biddings. When we used to go to the games, I don't know if you might remember this or not, but the gyms used to be packed. Oh, they yeah. used to be so packed. Oh, yeah. That we had to move the game to the uh Selva County Community College. Yes, yes. And we were one of the first teams uh that, that played there, you know, because of that, because of that situation. Yes. And um and actually it was my senior year. And um no, actually it was my junior and my senior year, excuse me. So uh, you know, so you're right. <laughs> Those rivalries were so great and yes. um you know, and in, in, in Ellenville, you know, the Steel Brothers, you know, they're like family, you know, Reggie, Carl, all of them, they're like family. And, uh, you know, we used to have battles, though. They were at Ellenville. I was at um, Liberty. You were at Fallsburg. We battled, man, but we had love for each other. Let we had love you. for each other. All the I, towns had love for each other, you know. I remember. I remember. And shout out, you naming all these basketball players. I have to shout out to the Hintons. I am a Hinton. My Uncle Chuck and all of oh, them. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Yes, the oh, Hintons. Yes, I'm, yes. I'm going to get my family props. I'm going to get them. <laughs> yes, no, no. The Hintons are in there, too. The okay, Hintons are in there, too. Yeah. But I remember the, fall, the Falls were Liberty Games, right? Yes. The Falls were Liberty Games with Craig Duffy and them. There was always a guaranteed fight. Always. <laughs> oh, it was just, oh, yeah. only when yeah. only when Liberty came. Well, no, no, I yes. don't know. Yeah, it was it was crazy, but it was no. Fun. <laughs> yes, but it's it's funny that you bring that up because I remember, as as you said, yeah. when we played Fallsburg, when we played Ellenville, when we played Monticello, the big yes. the big guys was there, man. The the, the big. The big guys were in the gym, you know, the 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 um the the, the old timers so, you know, you know, I'm an OG now, they call me, but the OGs were in the gym. Yeah. Representing. And uh, you know, but you're right. Most uh, a lot of times after the games, you know, some 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 people took it more than the game and yeah. you know, they wanted to play and stuff. But. but most of the time it was all love. Like you can see there was always those certain amount. Oh, it was always love. Always love. But it was amazing and you know, people, the old school basketball teams went during those games, they would show up yeah. the old players. Yes, they would. And yes. uh, it was nothing like it. And they don't have that today, unfortunately. Yeah. No, yeah. I would love to see the to see the gyms packed again like it was back in those days, you know, and uh, in my time and stuff. So you know, but um Bunky, you know, it's just uh I I've had an amazing journey, especially as a as a, as a basketball player. And, um, you know, my mentor, my main mentor, Reggie Biddings, God bless his soul. You know, he, he died a few years ago of, uh, I believe, cancer, oh, really? you know, um, but he was my mentor. And I just wanted to share this with you, too, because when we used to have open gym on the weekends, on uh, uh, Saturdays and Sundays, Monticello, Fallsburg, Ellenville, all the towns would come yeah. to Liberty, you know, and we would play inside the gym. And I mean, it's like the Drew League now, the Rutgers, you know, and and West Fifty West uh, for, uh West Fifty Fourth Street, I think it is. It was like those things in the city, but we had it up here, and guys were coming from everywhere, and we play from one to four every Saturday and Sunday, and we have a lot of great games with those rivalries. And not only that, if you lost, if you lost, just like in you know, if you lost, you you sat for a while. 
<laughs> you sat for a while unless, you know, somebody knew you, you know, you, you was one of, you know, the top top dogs, then you got you got to play a little more. But it, but what I loved about it, Bunky, was it started with me, was when I was coming up, this guy Reggie Biddings, you know, who 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 like uh, uh like Mo Martin is one of the, the, the top guys of, of all time at Liberty. Uh-huh. And, and I'm just honored that people consider me to be in that group, to be like one of the top guys ever at Liberty. But we had a lot of great players, Bunky. We had, as you know, at Fallsburg, as you know, I know, I mean, we had a lot of great players from, you know, from Maurice to his brother. His brother Milton was a, was a beast too. Milton, from Maurice's brother, he was a beast too, you know. And, 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 um, and the reason I'm bringing this up is like when the first time I ever went to, the open gym program, you know, Reggie was up there, you know, the top dogs was up there, you know, the Ron Duffy's, the, uh, 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 the Nate Bell's, the Milton Martin's, the, uh, you know, a lot of guys before me and Reggie gave me my first opportunity to play. He said, you know, let's, let's give Sam a chance to play. So I went out there and I did okay, you know, and then that built, that built up my confidence that, yeah, I could play too. You know, I could play with these guys. And, um, you know, that led to like you were talking about in the beginning, you know, my confidence to uh, uh, to build up as a player. You know, I'm humble, but, you know, when I'm on the court, you know, yeah, I, I'm, right. and I'm not backing down from nobody. I'm not, right. you know, yeah. and you can't. If you back right. down. Oh, God. You know, yeah. yeah. You're not going to be anybody. Uh, that's so. You know. So but Reggie, Reggie was, you know, I just want to tell you this quick story. Reggie was my mentor. And um. You know, he went on to play, you know, uh, in Australia. He went on to play a pro really? basketball player in the, in the, yeah, in the NBL with the uh, Mellow Ball. You ever heard of Mellow Ball? The Mellow Ball? No. The Mellow Ball <laughs> who plays for the, he, well, he plays, well, got people that, that probably on here that know basketball a lot yeah. more, you know, would know who the Mellow Ball is. And he played in the NBL. Okay. That's overseas. And um, he played in the NBL. So, but anyway, um, Reggie Reggie holds the record in in that professional league in Australia for most points, okay. for most points in a game. And um, what I'm honored about is when Reggie went to Australia, he became a player coach later on, okay. and um, he he invited me to come over there to Australia to play on on his team in in, uh-huh. in the pro league. But I turned it down, which is going to show some of my character. And what I wanted to talk about with Sean okay. Carey with the kids too, That's I turned it I'm down. Because, mm-hmm, yes, you go ahead. I'm sorry. You no, know, it's okay. I, I was going to ask you um, how you believe that your skills and values that you've learned in basketball, right? Everything that you've learned translate to other areas of your life, such mm-hmm. as personal development, community involvement, professional growth, like everything from basketball. Because like people, that's skill, team building, learning with the So how did it evolve? in your life and well today. well yeah um that's a great question the, the reason that that my character involved is because um like i mentioned the story about with reggie i turned that down because i was just getting ready to start a family you know i had just got okay. married and uh, i was getting ready to go into corrections and um the basketball league is, is not a full you know full-time job and I just got married and I was just getting ready to have a baby. You know, my, 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 my shout out to my oldest daughter, Samantha, and my youngest daughter, Shania. I love y'all. Daddy loves y'all. And I'm going to have two doctors in the family, Bunky, two doctors. Oh, you know, so, well, congratulations. Yeah, they're both, they're both going, they're both going to be doctors. Yeah, they're All both right. going to be doctors. So, um, so I had to make a choice. My love is basketball. My love is basketball. But I'm a family man now. And um, I'm just getting ready to have my oldest daughter, Samantha. So, uh, well, my wife is, not me, but. Um, so I had I turned that down because I needed to have a full-time job. And, you know, right. in basketball or any sport, you can get hurt, and that's your career. That's, you know, hello, that's, that's your career. That's what happened to Mo, unfortunately. Yeah. Right? Then he blow his yeah, knees out, so, something happened, them knees. Yeah. You basketball yeah. players and y'all knees, boy. Yeah. So I made that decision not to play professional basketball in Australia. And um, I don't regret it. I don't regret it. And I don't I don't regret it at all because I got two beautiful daughters and I and and um 
you know, you know what a question people ask me, Bunky, is did you ever regret not having a boy? Because you know, I'm a you know, I'm a basketball, I was a basketball star. And I said, no, no, I don't regret it at all. I don't regret that at all. I'm I thank God for what he gave me. He gave me two beautiful girls. Healthy, and beautiful. and whatever they decide to do in their life, that that's that's good. That's right. good. So so no, no, I don't I don't regret it at all, ever. Mm -hmm. But that's a crazy question. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know, some people, you know, will ask that question because because of you know my background and and you know well you know if you had yeah yeah if you had a yeah if you had a son sorry yeah if you had a son then you know you he might have made the NBA or something or you know I mean I'm always working with your daughters could have made the WNBA if they wanted yes 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 and you know what I never pushed them to play basketball I never I never told them that you know well you know. Cause you know, they know who I am and everything, but I, I, I'm, I'm happy with whatever they decide to do in life. Exactly. And shout outs to the South, shout outs to the South Carolina Gamecocks. Dawn Staley is the greatest coach, man. She is beautiful, and you know why? Because her, her first belief is in God. She puts God first in her life, just like I do, just like you do. That's so that's why I love Dawn Staley. Kudos to her, man. You gotta put them first, otherwise everything else is gonna crumble. People don't seem to get that, <laughs> you know. Like yes. People yes. be doing the most, but no, I'm happy for you. Two doctors, all right. Um, I used to um wonder that too about well about myself, um, because I have three sons. I didn't have any daughters, so and, you know they all play basketball and did all that, all those good sports, basketball, soccer. I'm a boy yes. mom. I said one day I'll have a granddaughter. And sure <laughs> enough, I got her. And oh, that's a blessing. Oh, yeah, but blessing. God knew I couldn't handle being a girl mom. Yes. I, what? No. So we get what we can handle. So you got the girls. A boy might not have worked out for you. You know, like those. <laughs> it might have been a mess. So that's a blessing. But you're a boy, mom. You're a boy, mom. I'm a girl, dad. I'm a girl. Uh, God bless Kobe Bryant. I'm a girl, dad. But uh, <laughs> but, but um, but um, but um, Bunky, yes. Um, if if I could just say this too, real quick. I I have I have the greatest job right now. I work with kids. I work with kids from the ages 13 all the way up to 20 something. Well, and I just want to give, what, what, I what just want to give it. Yeah. I just would love to give a shout out to St. Christopher's and company. Um, um, I would love to give a shout out to the CEO, um, uh, Dr. Sarah, um, Rubeck, uh, my, my supervisor, my, uh, the camp director, uh, Mr. Jerry, the, the Jerry, the Gene, the assistant director, Mr. Um, Jackson and all the beautiful staff at St. Christopher's. I love you guys. Love working with you. Thank you for what you do for our kids. But that's what I do. I'm the I'm the sport, I'm the uh, I'm the recreation coordinator there. So I am in charge of all the activities and stuff on on the campus. And we have about 54 kids there now, and um, they they come from different backgrounds, and uh, a lot of them have uh, different. Um, they have some have behavioral issues, some have different um, things, but they're okay. beautiful kids, though, Bunky. They're okay. beautiful kids, and um, they're just like any kid, any other kid. They're regular kids, just like any other kid. You know, they just have they just fell into different, you know, situations. That's all. Okay. Um, well, yeah. I mean, we all have something, right? That's all. Yes. Like, I'm like, we all have something going on. <laughs> You know, some yes. of us just know how to mask it a little better than others, you know. So yes. Yes. they are you learn. So with everything that you've learned throughout, you know, your growing up in basketball and having a family, you've learned how to weave and maneuver with working with the different personalities. You work with people where they are, right? Yes. So do you find that um kids gravitate towards you more? Yes. 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 That's a great question. Yes. Because I feel that uh, due to my uh, demeanor and stuff that kids see on, my, on a job like mine, kids have to feel like they can trust you. Right. They can, they have to feel like, right, right. Right. So my, a lot of kids will come to my office and talk to me about problems and stuff. And, and ask me questions about different things, and um, 
And I feel that that's one of my gifts from God is that I'm able to communicate with people, not just kids, but adults. I feel like I never, I never um, cannot talk to anyone. I'll talk to anybody. It doesn't matter who you are, what race you are, you know, what your background is, you know, I, I, I can, I can talk to you. I can talk to you and I can communicate with you. And um, so that question you asked, that was a very good question. Yeah, so I feel that's one of the gifts that God has given me to be able to communicate with people, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to reach out to people, especially especially kids, okay. especially kids, you know. So your office is a safe place for them because some kids don't have a safe place. You're like right, a safe right, place. right. In my office and and you know, I work in the gym. You know, the gym is in, in my area. You know, also so, okay. you know, the fit that sometimes kids need. You know. Um, they need right a safe haven. They need a release, an escape, you know, from right. maybe something they experience during the day. Right. You know, so they feel like they can. But you know, not only me. There's other staff there too that that are like that. You know. Right. That, that the kids can reach out. But my gift, one of my gifts, is that yes, yes. Okay. That I can and you're a recreational with. person. People. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's gonna be fun. Um. Is there like a, a moment, a memorable thing? Like what is something that stands out to you that makes your heart smile? Like we all have something like that we can look back on and just be like, you just smiling from the inside out. Like you want to share an experience like that? Sure. Oh, wow. Can I, can I just say this first? Bunky is an uh, uh, awesome um, person as being prepared. Uh, her, that's, got, that's definitely one of your gifts. You took me through these steps from <laughs> beginning to now, and I had no issue, no problem. I mean, you are awesome at what you do. Your podcast is awesome, and thank you. and uh, I thank you for allowing me to be one of the people that you have on in, in, in all the shows that you have done. Thank you for coming. Yeah, yeah your show number 173, and um, originally, um, when you were presented to me originally before I even spoke to you, I was like, no, I don't want to talk about basketball. I'm like, I don't know about, like, I'm a no, cheerleader. I'm glad. I had and I'm glad, that you, I'm glad you're doing that. I'm glad you're finding, okay. yeah, because because I am more than just a basketball player and stuff, you know? Yeah. So to answer, to answer your question, what makes me smile? Well, the first thing that made me smile was, uh, you know, when I got married and then birth of my kids. My, I mean, I love my girls. I mean, anybody that knows Sam Sanders Jr. knows that he loves his girls. Oh. I love Samantha and Shania Sanders. I talk to them every day, every day. That, that, that makes me smile. Oh, number okay. two, well, actually number one is when God reached out to me and told me, you know, I got a job for you. You know, I need, I need, to, I need you to be a deacon in the church. I mm -hmm. need you to, I need you to help people. You know that way too, okay. and I'm just going to share a quick story. A shout out to Friendship Baptist Church. Shout out to my pastor, uh, Reverend Harry L. Brown Jr. Shout out to all the members of who are, some of them are on here, I believe. Okay. Shout out to all the members of our church. Well, we are a family. I love you guys, and um, thank you for believing in me as a deacon, pastor, and thank you for the members that believe in me as a deacon. And um, that. When God told me, I want you to become a deacon, that made me smile. And here I am eight years later doing his will and doing what he's, what he wants me to do. You know, what he asked me on this earth to do, you know, to, to serve and help people and um, do his will. So you've so been that a deacon me, eight years. Been I've been a deacon eight years now. Yes. Now, was that a hard transformation for you? Because answering, yes. number one, answering God's call, people... First of all, you have to have an ear to hear his voice. A lot of yes. people don't hear, you know, when he yes. calls things. So what was, where were you in your life at that point when you were called? Like, did you question it? Because like, I know when he told me to do tea time, like I tell people all the time, <laughs> that knew my show, like I had COVID it, and I'm an arguer, right? Yes. And I was raised and born in the church. My um, grandparents, I mean, I was in church. Oh, yes. Yes. So um, I argued it. I was like, yes. no, 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 <laughs> but you know, but God has yes. a way of making you listen. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No question. No question. Yeah. yeah so, my cat, like, my cat Mace is <laughs> bothering me here, <laughs> but, um, yeah. but, um, so, what, yes. What was going on at that point when you were called, what was going on? Well, I, I got a little story to tell you. So, um, I, I'm originally, 
I was originally baptized and a member of Shiloh Baptist Church in Ellenville, New York. Okay. Yes. And I was there from when I was a kid. And, um, but you know, life is funny because there was a time in my life where, believe it or not, I didn't go to church. I didn't, I didn't want to go to no church. I didn't want to, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to um, serve God or anything. But um, when I um, decided to go, I mean, God spoke to me and he told me, you know, go to Friendship Baptist Church. I went to Friendship Baptist Church. I, I loved it there. So I ended up joining Friendship Baptist Church. And I remember saying to Pastor Brown, I said, Pastor, Yes, you know, I want I'm going to join Friendship Baptist Church, but um I don't think I'm going to really be doing anything in the church. Uh -huh. And this this story is going to lead to something amazing. Okay. So I told Pastor Brown, I said, I don't think, you know, I'm going to join the church, but I, you know, I didn't have any intention of doing anything in the church, you know, I just right. come to church. Just right. come to church, you know. Pastor Brown said to me, "Well, you never know what God's going to have planned for you." And you don't. <laughs> you really and don't. sure enough, one day God like you said, you, he reached out to me and said, look, I want you to become a deacon. Mm -hmm. So I went to Pastor Brown. I said, Pastor, you know, I want to be a deacon. Mm -hmm. I said, God has asked me, come to me. And you don't turn down what God asked you to do. No, you so, don't. So Pastor Brown said, okay, we have to train. I trained for a year under his mm -hmm. guidance. And uh, Reverend Matthews from Monticello, I don't know if you remember him. God bless him. God rest yes. his soul. He was yes. the pastor of First Baptist Church for many years. Yes. He's the one. So, you know, I, I went through the training and, and uh, I got to just share the story with your views. If you don't know what training is for a deacon, the final test is you have, I had Pastor Brown on my left side. I had Reverend Matthews on my right side. And they're asking me question after question after question after question for about an hour to see if I was ready. Mm -hmm. So when I finished that, I walk out the room. They said, okay, you can go out the room. So they discussed it. They came out the room and they said, you know, God has um, said that you can become a deacon. And Look at that God. was the process. So, yeah, my so grandfather be, was a deacon. He was a yeah, deacon. so you know, so you know, you know. And no, my dad I, I, is a deacon. I wasn't. My, in, my dad is a deacon, you know. My dad just turned ninety. Um, you know, shout out to my dad, Samuel Sanders Senior. Mm -hmm. I, um, he, he was. He's been a deacon for many years, and who knew? Who knew that we would have two in the family? Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, uh, yeah. Look, I mean, when God calls one, there's always offspring. Because I mm -hmm. look at um, my uncles, and because my mm -hmm. grandma, God bless her, yes. she was an evangelist, and so I have. Yes. One uncle who's a pastor, my uncle. Yes, Jesus. yes, I, I know. Yes, my uncle Mark, who's a a, a elder. My uncle yes. Mark, an elder, and my yes. uncle David. I'm not sure what he he does. I know he in the choir. You know, like he's a singer. <laughs> now he, he can sing. Oh, David can sing. David yeah. and, and David and his wife, his wife Linda. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's like I I know what I know what that's like, and so okay. So now we're putting all this together. So you got your sports, um, your values and everything. How do you put that into your kids? Because being in the church, right? Being in the church, you walk a certain way. And it's not because people tell you to. And, and that's why people get mixed up. You know, they think yes. people behave a certain way because they have to. No, that's a front if you're just doing it because you think people are looking. Automatically, yeah. God changes you. You walk differently. Right. You well, 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 people, people will see your wall. People, people will know. People yeah. will know if you're legit or not. Right. People, people will know. People will know if you're legit or not. Right. You know, and um, my walk wasn't always easy. I'm not going to sit here and say all oh, eight years was but was was easy. Been. It shouldn't have been. But, that's the only way you're relatable. Actually, you have to be relatable. Yeah, I struggled. I struggled in the beginning. Right. I struggled in the beginning, and and people questioned. You know. You know. Oh, he's a deacon. He's a deacon. But I can honestly say now, Bunky, that, you know, people, people, I, I don't think question that no more. I think, well, you know what? I think if people, do, Sam, if they do question, so what? <laughs> like That's my thing. People are going to question. People mm -hmm. are going to judge. People are always, people always got something to say. I'm just at that. I'm like, so what? Okay. 
Only God can judge me. That's my answer. To that's everybody. right. That's right. You said the magic words, and and um and um you know I'm very I'm very proud of the fact that you know um I I help people all the time because I want to because I I you know I always keep saying I want to do God's will and some of God's will is that you know He wants us to help other people He wants us I I want to help the kids on my job I want to help other kids I want to help other people mm-hmm. you know um. You know, it's, it's just amazing journey now, and 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 I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it I wouldn't trade it for anything. You know, I mean, from the basketball to oh, I just want to share this with you too. I, I'm actually a musician too. You know, I, and that that came from the church. That came from the church. So what that um, came, instrument? I play well, the I, I play I play drums and I play and I play bass now. And I want to give a shout out to um, Fred Steele. Fred Steele is an amazing drummer. He's one of the best drummers I've ever seen. And um, I'm always, always was asking him for tips and stuff. And one of the last things he said to me recently, you know, is like, you know, every time we would be in church and if he was there and I was there, you know, he would mostly play the drums. But there was this one time recently that he said, no, you go ahead, you go ahead and play. You're good now. You go ahead and play. And that, that, that to me. Oh, wow. (laughs) Like, okay, you know, you got oh wow! Yeah, so you know, shout, shout outs to him, and um, and I'm learning the bass now, and um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna start you know doing that at church too soon. Okay, I'm gonna do that, at, but um, you know, just amazing journey, man, just amazing journey. You know, I mean, like your gifts will make a way for you. Yep. Yeah. Oh, he always does. Oh, he always and, does. Um, he always you does. Man. You're, it says he. Yeah, I so you you're. Do you do motivational speaking? Yeah, motiv- my, my motivational speaking is using my clinics. Okay. And when I do my clinics, you know, I, I always try to motivate the kids okay. that, you know, even if a kid is not, doesn't think that he's a good basketball player, mm-hmm. but he, he, he can be, he, he can be a good basketball player or he could be good at something else. Right. You know, it doesn't have to be basketball. Just because you're at a basketball clinic, and you're not you're not good doesn't right. mean that you don't have other all of us have a talent you know that some of yeah. us have more than one talent but all of us have a talent that we're right. good at so but from my motivational speaking is is you know um you know being a deacon and in and, and my basketball clinic but my motivational speaking is when you know i'm always trying to bring people into the church i'm always trying to talk about about you know my lord and savior jesus christ you know i'm always trying to talk to people, you know, that, you know, ask me about him, you know, and so let me I, ask you, okay, let me ask you, because you said something and I told you, it's like, it's a conversation. So there's going to be something's going to spark something. I'll be like, ah, so you say you try to bring people into the, to come to church, right? Mm-hmm. What do you say to people who don't want to go to church? Because I can honestly say, and like, this is a struggle. Like I said, I, everybody mm-hmm. in my mm-hmm. family, I was born and bred in Stay church. Person. Great what question. Do you, what do you, Great what do you say to the people who um don't want to go? Well, my 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 thing is this, and I learned this in training, and I learned this from my pastor, and I learned this from other pastors too, is that you never force anybody to go to church. You never right. force anybody to 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 do your to do my religion. You know, I, I respect everybody's religion, whether you're Jewish, Catholic, whatever whatever your religion is, I respect that. I would never force my religion on you. And if you don't go to church, I'm not going to, 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 to bad mouth you. I'm not going to look down on you. I'm not going to judge you. I'm just going to try to inspire you like, well, maybe you might want to give it a shot. Maybe you, you might want to read the Bible, but if you don't, I don't, I'm not going to criticize you. I'm not going to call you a bad person or anything because you don't. But so no, I never, I never force anybody to, 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 you know, to do that. Right. But being, um, not going to church and not read in, in the Bible, they don't that one doesn't have anything to do really with the other. Because like mm-hmm. I have, you know, I, I read my word and I mm-hmm. study mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I just it's just and I don't do religion. I was apostolic. I my foundation will always be Pentecostal because that's just who I am. But I don't mm-hmm. do religion, religion because I found over the years. It's divisive. I feel like it just it divides people. 
some people like I look that growing up. I mean, you know how traumatizing it is as a little kid, right? Because you know, you growing up, you always believe that your religion is right, nobody else is right. I yes. had friends who were Jehovah Witness, best friends, and they were faithful yes. in there. Yes. My little innocent mind, I'm thinking, oh my God, you're going to hell because you're not apostolic Pentecostal. Because I didn't understand, you know, like we were yes. not allowed to go with them to their what is it? I'll call you back. Um, uh, I'm sorry, man. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I'll call you back. I'm, I'm doing a podcast right now. I'll call you back. Okay. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. No, it's, it's fine. It, it's fine. Things. Yeah, I got a call too. Um, they. Um, yeah, I don't know what their temple, what what is called, but I was never allowed to go to the into their church, and like that as a child really messed me up because I'm like, oh my god. They're not yes. gonna make it, you know. So that's why another reason, as I've gotten older, not yes, to, it's so to me. This is to me. Church people don't come for me. I gotta tell them, don't come for me. This is just bunky. And yes, you have that right. Right, and, and you and have that right. Like, you have that right. You have all the right, right. Have all the right in the world for that. Right, because God interacted and, with everybody. Jesus interacted with every. That's right. That's right. So, all, all day, every day. And, and the thing is, Bunky, is that when I say I love people, I love people. It's not yeah. just something to say, man. Right. Because if because it because people can people will know if you're genuine or not. Yes, they do. Like when I do posts on Facebook, you know, I do posts for inspiration. I don't do it to see how many likes I can get. Right. If if I get that's one right. like, that's, that's fine. Good. I do it. I right. do it to, to to inspire people, and people have told me, Sam, your posts have inspired me. Sam, yeah. something you said inspired me, and and that's that's all. I, I really I really love people, Bunky. I really love people, man. I love people's life is too yeah. short, and this is one more thing I want to say to to you, if I can. We sure. should give people we should give people their flowers yeah. while they're here on Earth, not exactly. when they're dead and gone, because they can't right. smell them when they're dead and gone. But when they're here on Earth. Let's give people their kudos. Let's give people their flowers. Let's, let's give people the respect, the love, you know, uh, for each other. That's that's the problem with our world now. That's the problem with our country because we have senators and congressmen and and and, and people who don't even love each other, man, don't even respect each other. You know, they have the nerve to hold up a Bible. Lord God, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know. And, uh, and, you, and you're saying that, giving flowers while you're here. What's going to happen? Lord forbid. Hopefully it doesn't happen. Soon as you're going down the road, your name going to be up on that wall. Hole. Oh, he was so great. He was this. And, yeah. But you didn't know yeah. while he was here. Yeah. You know? oh, and, so. and, and, and you're right, Bonky. And and um, and just, just to say real quick, Liberty, New York, I love you. Born and raised there. <laughs> Liberty High School, I love you. But Really, look, look, look at that. Look at that. Look at that wall of fame thing, man, and, and change it, man. Give give a lot of people who really deserve it. Not just me. Right. Give a lot of other people who have, I've, I've had conversations with. Oh, my dad didn't make it. And, you know, and, and I know these people and they should be on the wall. of fame. Or, right. or just do something different, man. Just have a sports wall of fame, too, you know, for the players, all the players. Because there's a lot of good people out there. And not just me, other people out there. That deserve to be, you know. I mean, three times I was nominated, I didn't make it, but like I said, I, I got my award from the man above, from Jesus Christ, you know, from God. That's my award. He lets me wake up each and every morning and see another day. And um, oh, can I just say this real quick? Thank you to everyone. This place where I'm sitting right now would not have been possible because I was involved in a fire some months ago and I lost my place. Oh. But thank God for all the people who who sent money. To my sister, um, my sister Neely started a GoFundMe for me, and I didn't know about it, but she started it for me. And people, showed I love y'all. People showed up. showed up and gave me so much money so that I could be able to get in, move into a new apartment that I'm in right now. Mm -hmm. And I think each and every one that said something that. That you know, I, I just appreciate everybody, man. Love y'all. Thank you. Thank y'all for doing it. I just had to say that. Thank oh, you for absolutely. everyone that, that helped me. That helped that's me get to where I am now. Yeah, that's that's crazy. 
But yeah. I mean, that they, you got the love and stuff that you needed to start. Uh, yeah, well, that shows how much people, you know, love Sam Sanders and I love y'all. I love y'all back. And you know, I love my family. Shout out to my sister Teresa, who's on here. Yeah, I see her. Yeah, she's on here from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Shout out to her. Shout out to all my family. I love each and every one of y'all. So Shout thank out you. To family. And thank oh, you for this time, Monkey. Thank you. I really appreciate so, this. Thank you. Because um you helped me with some basketball questions, you know, because I, I don't I don't know that I really don't. And people are like, how don't you know basketball? You was a cheerleader. Because I was a cheerleader. <laughs> I wasn't a basketball no. player. You know, I didn't you did a great job. You, you did a great job. And I have to shout out Liberty Cheerleaders. I just have to. Because <laughs> yes. I don't know, I don't know her name. My little sister Danica was a cheerleader. Um, oh, okay. They yes. Had, they had this coach. I don't know her name. She was short, short lady. When I say Liberty Cheerleaders was so, I mean, like in the beginning, we were. Mrs. Yorn? Was her you know? name Yorn? Mrs. Yorn? I don't know. I don't remember her name, but I know she had them in all the competitions. But in the beginning, yeah. like we were all, we were all, Fulver, Monticello, Liberty, Ellenville, all of us in the beginning were like ratchety. We were, we did yeah. the dance. <laughs> but this coach, the, the Liberty coach, she, she took it to another level. Like she took yeah. it to a level where they was winning competitions and stuff. Like I was in awe. Yeah, I remember. I remember that. Yes. So shout out to Liberty cheerleaders, even though y'all were our rivals, but. Yeah. Well, yeah. Shout out, shout out to all the cheerleaders, and shout out to the Liberty cheerleaders because you guys were the backbone for the Liberty basketball yes. team. And so, without you guys, we wouldn't have been able to be as successful as we are. We I agree. With that. That's right. Thank you for giving us our credit because it's a hard <laughs> job. It's a hard job. So yes. Right, so without, wait, don't you go nowhere. Before, yes. before you go there, any other thing you would like to say to the people? Anything you want to say before we end this? And it's great. It's eight oh two. This was it went fast. This went really fast. Yes, yeah, we had a great conversation. Yeah. Well, I just like to say, you know, once again, thank you everybody that supported um Bunky tonight on this this podcast. Thank you everybody that supported me because I, you know, I shared this with a lot of people, and I don't know exactly how many was on here, but thank you for everyone that participated, that joined in with us tonight, and I appreciate each and every one of you. And I just want to say that once again, you know, I love each and every one of you. You know, if you don't like me or care about me, I like you, I care about you, and I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Right. That's where I will end it. Yeah, it's thank you, Teresa. Yeah, it, it's okay. They don't like you, it's okay. Like that's my attitude. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not gonna change who I am. I'm gonna stay who I am. No, please do. Please do. You do a great job. You do thank a great you. job. I'm like, I'm 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 a little rough around the edges sometimes, but it's all good. But I want to thank you. Thank you all for tuning in tonight for you guys that it's your first time experiencing Tea Time with Bunky. Thank you. Um, you can go yes. to my channel and catch all the shows. Like I said, I, the conversations vary. I talk about everything. Yes, um, you do. Yeah, talk about everything. And um, if anybody out there viewing, you have any stories you think want to come on Tea Time, reach out to me. We can have that conversation. Um. Once again, like, share, follow, and subscribe. And you can catch this show. I'll send you the link. You can catch this show on Xeno FM Radio next Thursday at 8 a.m. on Culture Shock, Rockbox Radio, Radio Facero, and Rob the Music FM. And on Sunday, Godfidence Radio next Sunday. And it's aired in 191 countries. Um, the VGN, you can get the VGN Village, Village Global Network app. It's free, Android and iOS. Um, what else do I want to say? Um, oh, next week's show. Oh, God. Next week's show. <laughs> I had, well, it's actually not even a full week. It's Monday, my anniversary. Which oh, nice. When God gave me tea time with Bunker, he gave me April 15th, which is my grandmother's birthday. So this is nice. on her birthday. I have Miss Tamika Harris. For those that don't know the story, um, her sister Shanice Harris is the one that had went missing um, some years ago. Um, some years yes. ago. So we talked about that, but this isn't about that. This is mm -hmm. her journey. Tamika nice. lost 168 pounds. Oh, beautiful. Naturally, beautiful. Naturally, during the exercise, and she's my Zumba instructor. Beautiful. And so Beautiful. we're going to talk about the transformation, mind, body, and soul. So that's I have to check that out. Definitely. Yes. Monday at 7 p.m. Um, 
it's going to be an awesome 168 pounds. That's what she, that's what she. Wow. Wow. Well, so, God bless her, man. That's awesome. Yes. And she, she's an amazing young lady. So that's next Monday, you guys. So we're going to have tea time on Monday, not Thursday next week. Cause I got to celebrate my birthday. So I appreciate you guys. Happy birthday to you. you guys be kind. Don't be mean and make sure you're registered to vote. Know your candidates. Yeah. Know your candidates. Don't, oh my God. Don't just listen because yeah. I'm going to say it now because I, I'm sorry, you Monticello people. Y'all board is a hot mess. Their board is a mess. It's a disaster <laughs> because people are on that board in position. I'm sorry, y'all. Whatever you can come for me, you can say, <laughs> say it like it is. Um, that should not be in position. They shouldn't be in position. People voted for people because of the color of their skin, and it's a mess. It's I went going to all their meetings, all of their meetings. I go to Fallsburg's too, and I stream them live so y'all can view the board meetings, give transparency so y'all can see what is going on in these board meetings. It's a hot mess. Monticello board, a hot mess. When I say they are a hot mess, there's no God in it. And I'm sorry they're going to go to church and shout on Sunday doing corruption all during the week. I'm just saying, y'all, I got to go stop my blood pressure. They get me hot. <laughs> they're doing some wrong stuff, though, Sam. They're doing some really, the stuff that they're yeah, doing, I believe that. it's horrible. They, they, and they, and, like and, I say, we have to move, we have to move forward. We have to, we, we have to get out of the old times and move forward. Oh and, and all come together. You know, yes. that's why I want to do more events where we all come together as, as, as people, all come together, man. That, that's and my goal. Can, that's my dream. We all come together as people. Let me know and I can share it. You have to let me know though, because a lot of times I'm really not on. Yes. But if you like send it to me and be like, well, can you share this? I'll share it and we'll get it out. Because people need to be more involved. But people well, I, I wanna I wanna do something with Rashad. I want to do something with Rashad and Chris. I'm going to do something with Rashad because, you know, Rashad's place is a community center, oh, yeah, too. The rec center, so, so, you know, I already talked to him about it. Yeah, I, the, rec the rec center. Rec center. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do some big things. Yeah, and then you'll hear. You'll, you'll know. You'll be one of the first to know. And we'll share it. Share it out. But I, I, yeah. I just want you to know and the people to know that the community feels defeated. That's why they're not involved. Like I say, the regular people, the people yeah. that have been here and live here, um, they feel yes. defeated. So they're not involved. And yeah. it's sad. It's a depressed state right now. So it's like really depressed. Yeah, that's all you got to do is involve people. People will feel better when they feel like they're involved. Right. Just get them involved and let them know that they matter and that they're important. It's not just about me. It's not just about you. It's about everybody as a yes. whole. So, yes. That's right. I agree 100%. Yes. yes. Thank you. All right. So you guys, yeah, I'm over my time. I appreciate you. Tune in next week. Like, share, follow, and subscribe. Tune in to my tea time with Bunky because I'm well, I am kind of off of my personal page. I'm getting off of my Facebook page. I'm going to YouTube. But in the meantime, we're still sharing. So you guys have a great night. I appreciate you so much. See you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.